CQRS and event sourcing are both very uh, simple, uh, trivial concepts in actual fact. They're very easy to understand. There is absolutely no magic involved in them. And uh, on the other hand, the, the approach, you might argue, is a bit heavy-handed compared to how we do it in the real world. So let's imagine that you have a class called person. You're modeling a human being. Typically, what you would do in the sort of uh, domain model scenario, you would just give this uh, person an age, for example, as a property, and then you would go off and you would actually instantiate this object directly. So you say var p equals new person, and then you would say p.age equals 123, whatever. You could then print out p or p's age or whatever you want. Okay, the only problem is that at this point, I mean, like here, uh, you've, you've made a change. And let's suppose that you want to track, want to remember that at some point you set the age to 123. Now, why would you want to track things? Well, one reason is audits and uh, you know a form of logging in the sense that you can track what your uh, uh what this particular uh field of property was set to that's kind of like having a historical debugger kind of like the intellect trace approach very similar but the other thing is you might want to backtrack so you want to take your entire massive super complicated system and you want to take it back uh, a couple of hundred states or you want to take it back an entire day maybe because you want to perform a rollback but maybe because you just want to investigate how you ended up with the values you ended up with and not having this information is really detrimental to uh, uh, fixing uh, fixing systemic issues in your uh, in your services in your applications because you have no idea the exact set of circumstances which led to a particular situation. So uh, two ideas related to this are one, uh, CQRS, which is command query responsibility segregation. Essentially the idea that a typical component uh, does not communicate, uh, does not give you a direct interface for changing something or getting something. Instead, it receives a command or it receives a query and it responds uh, on the basis of what it actually received or it might choose not to respond, for example. And the other is event sourcing. And the idea here is that uh, all the changes, like for example, the, the fact that you set a property to 123, all the changes are encapsulated as events. And now the advantage, as I said, is that you can review and roll back and whatever. And uh, you want these things to be serializable as well, which means that even though uh, in this example, I'm operating on references to objects, really objects, really you would have objects which have unique identifiers, which are themselves serializable. You can persist the entire state of events plus the current object graph and whatever's in it. So at any point in time, you can take your system throughout its entire lifetime using event sourcing. And this is great. And this is what we're going to uh, take a look at uh, from the uh, from the C-sharp perspective. Now, what? first of all, let's talk about uh, CQRS and uh, the two different types of things that exist. So command, command is uh, when you want an object to do or change something. So if I want to set the person's age, I don't say person.age equals whatever. Uh, this no longer works. Instead, I send it a command. I send it a command saying, can you please change your age? And then it can change its age. It, it can avoid changing its age. Some other component can interfere and avoid changing its age. Some other component can interfere in our sending of a command to person and cancel it or modify it. For example, we could have a a uh, separate component, which uh, when you sort of uh, lie on your driver's license, it actually decreases your age by three. And so what the value you actually set is not the real value that was passed in because it was intercepted. And stuff like that is uh, generally, uh, generally very easy to do if you adopt this approach. So instead, a person still has an age. So you still have a, a private field called age with a small a because it's private and you're not really, uh, at no point in time will you be exposing it to anybody because you want to make it impossible to uh, manipulate the object directly. And in fact, this reference shouldn't exist either, but uh, we're, we're sort of, uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to ignore this 
a particular bit. So what happens typically is that uh, per other objects in the system, they would typically have uh, communication organized through a centralized component. I call this component an event uh, broker. Uh, other people give it uh, different kind of names. Uh, so I, I, I like the uh, I like the event broker notation. So there are three things in the event broker. So one is uh, you have a set of all events that happened. Or you could have some time horizon of events. So essentially, or you could be serializing them, of course. And the reason why you want all events is that when you want to backtrack to a particular state in the system, you could do it easily. And if you want to get back to where you were, you can do that easily. If you want to backtrack and then uh, forget all the changes and do a, uh, do a new branch, for example, so you can have several branches of the development of your system, you can do that easily. And the reason for that is that you essentially have a list of all the events. I'm going to trivialize what's actually a uh, fairly complicated. You would essentially have something like a public I list of event. And event is something we're going to uh, specify. So I'll call this all events equals new uh, list of events. There we go. So event at the moment is just, you know, some, some type, some type with some type of polymorphism on top of it. So essentially we store all the things that happen. Like for example, somebody changes person's age, that's an event that gets stored. Somebody removes an object, moves an object from location A to location B, that's an event. All of these things can be, uh, uh, recorded and the critical thing about events is that you, you should really be able to uh, backtrack so once an event happened and you recorded it from that event you should reconstruct a command which undoes uh, the event assuming that the concept of undo is applicable because sometimes it really isn't okay so second thing sometimes it really isn't okay so second thing is uh, you want uh, the uh, commands to be able to be able to post commands on the broker to send them to everybody, basically. And the third thing uh, is you want queries. And you want to be able to query, for example, ask the person, well, can you tell me what your age is, for example. Okay, so we're going to implement all of this now. Now, obviously, event broker is something which is everywhere. And since uh, we we, we might have it as a static object, but we might also simply uh, inject it as a uh, constructor parameter, for example. Uh, if we assume that the event broker actually represents a system which kind of lives or uh, doesn't live, then it makes sense to use dependency injection and just, you know, inject the entire thing. So essentially you have event broker, uh, broker like this, and then you kind of initialize it from the constructor. That's it from the constructor. That's uh, that's a very simple approach. So what happens then is you have something like you have your uh, event broker and you, you would have just one in the system. So it would have a singleton lifetime. And then it would uh, your dependency injection container would automatically inject it to whatever objects are being created in the system. Okay, so you've got an event broker and the goal of this whole thing is that you can listen to some of the changes because essentially when somebody puts a command or a query, uh, we want to notify the world, basically. And for that, we use events because, well, in the real world, you can use events, you can use other things like, uh, well, there are lots of data structures for uh, this exact thing. So I'm going to have um, an, uh, an event and let's have event handler. Okay, so this event, it actually sends off a command. So let's just say command here better terminology. I like repeating the same thing over and over. So uh, uh, let's make command. So once again, this is just going to be a type. And the same goes for uh, the query event. So whenever somebody wants some information, uh, this goes through this uh, event for queries. So queries. Okay, so query is also a type for now. Right. So we have two events and whenever somebody wants something, they have to uh, basically invoke this event and we can, we can make helper functions. In fact, we are going to make helper functions. And our first concern is how to set the age of the person under this layout. So to set the age of the person, we issue a command. So a command is something that asks an object to do something 
or to change itself or to you know perform some sort of action so in order to issue this command we have to have some sort of on the uh, event broker for doing exactly that I, I i made things public here but in addition let's let's just you know simplify things so that it becomes a bit more clear so uh, let's suppose that uh you want to generally uh query for well no we're not doing queries yet so you want to just uh, invoke a command so you would have a uh method called command which would take a command let's have c and what would happen is you say commands invoke this comma c that's it that's how you would do you you invoke the command and, and off it goes so we want to send p the person a command for changing the h how do we do it well we already have a mechanism for invoking the command but nobody's really listening to it before invoking the command but nobody's really listening to it because person has to be listening to this command in order to react to it so essentially we say uh, broker dot commands and then we create a method broker on commands so uh what do we do here well we're, we're getting some command but really person has to specify what kind of commands it can you can really process so for example you might have a uh, change age command change age command all right so let's suppose that our commands are targeted so they uh they would target a specific person for example let's actually do this in here in the change age command so we'll leave the base class as it is well you might want to have it as event args for no reason whatsoever and you might also here specify who you're changing so you sp and in addition you're specifying the new value so you're specifying the uh, new age that you want to set so i made a constructor here as well so what happens when we want to actually change this is we say event broker dot uh command new change age command the target is p and the age is 123 so does it work i mean let's let's find out let's write p dot oh we don't have age that's right we can't get age you see because that's something that we encapsulated it's private you can't get it so now the question is well what happens when somebody sends this command so first of all you change whether it's the change age command var cac equals command as cac so uh if uh cac if uh, cac is not equal actually you can do it this way so we we now check the uh uh what we what do we do now uh, let me just think yeah so we need to make sure that the command is not now and we also need to make sure uh, that uh, the target is this so if uh, cac is not equal to no and cac.target is equal to this then we can actually do something then we can change the age so we say age equals age with a small a equals cac.h there we go okay so this this would it would appear as though this is all you need to do so we now have the command part done now about the query part how do you get the age and here of course you subscribe to yet another event so whenever somebody sends a query for something then once again we need more classes as it happens so we have uh, age query somebody wants the age okay so we can uh, process that so we can say var ac equals query as age query and once again when you send the query you might want to specify who the target is so you might want to say public person target and only if the target if ac is not equal to null and ac dot target equals this only then uh, do you set the return value now notice it's a void here 
So the way to return something for a query is to set it somewhere. So you might have something like this. And uh, uh, this could be... And uh, uh, this could be a bit painful, I guess, because I'm going to do object result. Okay, so object obviously means that you're boxing and it all becomes really nasty and you have to have the name, uh, the type of the uh, function in the invocation, which is annoying. But the end result is that when you query, uh, you say ac.result equals age. There we go. That's all you need to do. So that's how the query works. And we can try it straight away. But in order to try it, we might want to have another helpful function inside the event broker. And this time we, we can do a bit of magic with generics just to make it a bit more palatable. So we're going to have a uh, return type T, query of T. Uh, so we specify some query and then we invoke it. So queries uh, invoke. Uh, this comma command. Oh, it's Q actually. And then, oh, it's Q actually. And then what we do is we return Q dot result, but we need to cast it to T. All right. So now we can get the age using the CQRS approach. So we can say int age equals, um, int age equals, uh, uh, e event broker dot query, query for an int, and then, uh, specify the uh, the actual query. So here, uh, instead of P, what we specify is uh, new age query, and uh, let's let's see what we need to specify. Target equals P. There we go. Okay. So uh, do we have? Oh no. So let's see if this actually works. Let's see if we can get it to work. I'm just going to run this. Yes, 123. So we set the, nobody's really tracking these changes. Somebody set the age and then they set it again and nobody's really tracking. You can see the all events thing is not being used. So let's actually use it. Let's record every single change so that we can backtrack it. Okay, so for that, we use yet another hierarchy. We have a hierarchy called event. And by the way, let me, uh, let me open up the file structure explorer so you can see the structures that we're using. You can see lots of structures and lots of members here. So event. Okay, so this is a base class. Actually, I think we already have one. Yeah, we already have an event somewhere. So now all we have to do is make a derived type. So let's suppose the age changes. So we can call this age changed event or just age change, whatever. What do we need to store about this event? Well, we might want to store the target uh, person target, and we want, want to store the older new values. Store the target, uh, person target, and we want, want to store the older new values. So public int old value and new value. And then, well, I think that's, that's pretty much it. We might want to have a uh, constructor for all of this. And that's, that's all we're done. So now, uh, immediately before we perform the actual change. So when we handle the command for changing the age, before we assign the actual age, we send an event. Uh, so for example, we say that uh, broker dot events dot add new age changed event, this, then the old value, which is age, then CAC dot age. There we go. So now what we're doing is uh, we're essentially recording the fact that we set the age to some value and this is great uh this this is uh actually we can uh we can print out all the events let me find this event uh the change uh aged uh not the command the actual event and then what we can do is we can uh, do a two string and here i can say uh return age changed from old value to new value, there we go, extra semicolon here, or curly brace, rather. Okay, so after this change, we can print out each event for each of our e in eb dot all events, keeping it public at the moment, console.writeline e, 
actually don't we have don't we have for each no i wish we did i wish we did have for each okay so if i run this you're going to see that here we now registered this change so h changed from 0 to 123 uh so that's good now the final is kind of the icing on the cake how could we undo something because now we're keeping every change in the system so we can restore the system to virtually any state that we want. And if you implement serialization properly, then you should be able to serialize these and create branches and whatever. So how do we, let's do a simple undo. So inside the broker, I'm going to have uh, a method for undoing the last operation. Undo last. So the goal of this undo last is that you essentially uh, look at the uh, last event and then you say, well, if this is h changed, so ac equals e as h changed, changed. and if this is not uh, equal to null, then what you do is you invoke a command for reversing this change. Because remember, you cannot communicate with components directly. You can only do commands ever. So you invoke the command, you change h command. And here you specify the target, ac.target. But the value you want to set is the old value, not the new value. OK. And then, of course, you remove the event because it never happened. Uh, ac or uh, no, just. Uh, all events remove remove the event e there we go so you might think this is correct but not really uh, there's one more problem so let's imagine that after i perform the change and i print the age so let's and i print the age so let's have uh, can we separate split declaration and assignment because after I print this, what I do is I perform an undo, undo last. And then if I print all the events, oh, you're going to see that I changed the age from 0 to 123. And then I have a different event, like I changed the age from 123 to 0, which is incorrect. Because if I wanted to undo, I wanted to get rid of all the events. I don't want to generate a second event. So for that, we use suppression. So effectively, you suppress the fact that uh, uh, the a change actually occurred. So if we go to the command class, what we can do is we can say uh, boo register equals true. So by default, uh, commands are registered. They generate events to suppress it. So if you want to undo something, then uh, you really want to specify that you don't want to register. So I say register equals false. And then of course, up here, when, when the command gets generated, you say, if and only if you want to register the command, then you actually perform all the notification. So as we run this, you'll see h changed from 0 to 123. But after we undo, there is nothing more to print, because we undid all the changes in the system. And now let's just just for the sake of completion, let me show you that we did in fact undo the whole thing. So I'll do this once again, and we have zero. So we changed the age from zero to 123. Here it is. And then we undid it to the default value and it's now zero. So this is a, a small overview of how you would do uh, uh, Securus and event sourcing in .NET. There are, there are lots of issues with this entire approach. So let me, let me show you some of them. One, uh, the, at the moment, there is no modeling of dependent properties. So for example, if I write public bool can vote, and can vote is going to be defined as a property which returns true if the age, if the small age is greater than or equal to 16, then there is no way for us to model the dependency between age and can vote. And we are a bit stuck once again, because well, we have to have additional mechanisms for specifying that. Another issue is that these events are not weak. So uh, you, you kind of, uh, you subscribe to them, but what if, you know, person goes out of scope or whatever, you're not really controlling this properly. And in fact, instead of uh, the simpler, uh, simple event broker that we're using here, I prefer 
a reactor extensions event broker, which is much smarter and, and can uh, essentially the the thing with reactor extensions event broker is the subscription is disposable. So you can put it inside a using or something, and and it's all uh, very something, and and it's all uh, very uh, useful. And of course, the other thing, as I mentioned, is you typically don't provide references when you send things on the wire. So you would, uh, in the real world, what would typically uh, happen is you would have some sort of uh, person pool or uh, person storage, and then uh, you would have maybe a, a dictionary from some uh, unique ID to a person uh, like this, people. And then uh, what you would have inside a person is you would have a public int unique ID. So every object which is created, it would not, you wouldn't be able to create an object using the constructor like this. Instead, you would generate it and it would generate the unique ID. And these unique IDs would have uh, all the objects in a particular form of storage. And the advantage of that is that you now get serializable events because this, I don't know how to serialize it, to be honest. What you should be able to do is you should be able to uh, uh, serialize target ID. Target ID. You should be able to serialize that, and serializing reference is a bit weird. So that's how you do it in the real world, and that's how you end up with systems which uh, you could certainly do in uh, in C sharp, but you can equally implement this whole thing in C or C plus plus or any other language which doesn't have events and that sort of thing. So uh, this has been a small demo, and let me know if you have any questions. If this is of interest to you.